Now, a couple of weeks ago, I've asked you guys on X the following question. I want to redesign a famous website and make a YouTube video about it. What website should I redesign? And you guys just blew it out of the water. I was not expecting to get so many responses and so many good ideas. So good, in fact, that I decided to make a series out of this. I'm not exactly sure how to call this series, but because you guys are so good at it, if you have some ideas, just leave them in the comments below. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the end-to-end -end process of how I redesigned YouTube. Now, before starting, any design work, the first thing I did is to define my KPIs. In other words, what is the scope of my design? What do I want to achieve with this redesign? Why I'm redesigning this user interface? And to answer that, because obviously I did not have access to anyone working at YouTube, so they can tell me exactly what they would like to achieve with a new redesign, I had to imagine what will be a potential goal. And what I thought about is one, that they would like to increase their user engagement, two, that they would like to increase their ad revenue, and three, is that they would like to incentivize new content creators to create content for YouTube. And from the content creator's perspective, I used myself as an example. So I thought to myself, what are the key things that I would like to see improved on this platform from my perspective? So the first thing is that I would like to increase the user engagement as well, because if the user spends more time on that platform, that means that they're more likely to spend more time watching my YouTube and that increases my revenue. So that was the first thing. And the second one is that I would like to diversify my income streams so I don't rely on AdSense alone, meaning that I would love to have more more opportunities to share products or services that I endorse or that I create. So after defining this and pinpointing exactly what is my target with this redesign, I started the process. Now the first step was to analyze the current user interface. So I went on YouTube, I searched for a random video, clicked on it, and afterwards started grabbing some screenshots of the current UI for desktop, tablet, and mobile. By the way, if you're curious to know what I've used to grab those screenshots, it's called Cleanshot X, and I have an entire video Video about it, I'm gonna link it over here. Now, after I grabbed those screenshots, I created a new file, I called it YouTube Redesign, and just dropped those onto my canvas. I then reorganized them a bit and then started to add some ideas using my annotation kit. Now, by the way, if you want to download this annotation kit, you can download it for free on UX Lab Academy. Link is in the description below. Now, as I was looking through the interface and noting down some ideas, a thing that stood out to me is that they are promoting shorts on desktop. So you have this section over here where where you have shorts and I'm not exactly sure why they're promoting shorts on desktop because the user experience in my opinion is not that good but maybe they have some data that I don't have access to and maybe users actually enjoy watching shorts on desktop but for me personally from my own perspective I think that that's just wasted space so in my redesign I decided to just remove that completely also I saw a couple of inconsistency when it comes to design and some design elements I noted those as well I've noted down some ideas on the comment section as well because I think the way it looks now it's a bit messy and it just feels like an afterthought and then finally I took some notes on the mobile version as well but I did not spend too much time on it because it personally I don't think that anyone is using the web app to consume YouTube content I think it's like very small percentage I think most of us are using the actual app and because of that I did not spend too much time looking at the mobile version now after I added the annotations the next step was to play around with the user interface and see exactly what each button does or to see the functionality of the platform just to make sure that I keep all the functionalities intact and I don't remove anything important. So I started playing around with these filters here on the side, hover over these thumbnails here to see exactly what functionalities I have available for them, played a bit with the search just to see how it works, started clicking pretty much all the buttons, the like, dislike, the share, the download, the thanks button or the donation button, played around with this slider a bit and lastly tried this create clip functionality. Now after I played around with the user interface I started preparing the assets that I will need for my designs. Now the first thing that I did was to download some thumbnails just so I make sure that I have enough assets when creating the user interface and for that I used this website called YouTube Thumbnail Grabber which allows you to add a YouTube video link and then download the full HD thumbnail image. So I did that for a couple of videos then I created a new folder named the folder thumbnails grabbed those thumbnails from my download folder and just put them in then I went ahead and added this extension called SVG exports for Chrome. I never used it before this video so I discovered it while I was doing this redesign, but it's actually an amazing extension. What it does is that it allows you to go to any website, you click on this icon here on the corner, and then you select the icons that you would like to extract from that user interface. And the beautiful thing is that once you click download selected, it will download all your assets as SVGs. So no PNGs, no JPEGs, just pure SVGs files that you can then drop into Figma. So I got all those SVGs and I just dropped 
drop them in Figma just to make sure that I have all the necessary assets before I start designing. So I grabbed these icons, I started renaming them, made sure that they all have the same size and obviously because I'm obsessed with auto layout I made sure that everything is organized pixel perfect. Now another thing that I did here is that I took all of these icons over here and I just combined them as variants. It's a lot easier and a lot faster to design this way. Then I went ahead and used this what font extension to see what font they are using just to make sure that I'm using the exact same font and the same size that they're using. And lastly just to make sure that I'm using the exact same colors I went ahead and just grabbed another screenshot of the user interface and then using color.adobe.com and using their extractor theme I just added that image to extract the colors that I need. And personally, I love this feature because it automatically extracts the colors from any user interface. It might not work all the time as you would expect, but what is cool about it is that you can just drag these dots over here to select the color that you would like to extract, and then you can create the color palette. Once I had that, I just created a couple of rectangles in Figma, added those colors, obviously organized them using auto layout, and then went on each color to create a style out of it. That's because it will help me, again, with consistency and to design faster. Once I had everything prepared, the last step was to grab an exact screenshot of the same resolution I'm gonna be using to redesign, which is 1040 by 1024, just to make sure that I keep the same proportions as they currently have it on their current user interface. So now we are ready to redesign. Now, if you work at YouTube, you won't need to do all this preparation as you will have all these assets and probably they will have, you know, like a design system. But because I did not have any of those and I wanted to be as accurate as possible, I had to go through all of of these steps just to make sure that I have the correct assets. But luckily for you, because I did this already, if you want to redesign YouTube or if you want to exercise using these assets, I left the link in the description below. You can download the file and there you'll have all the assets that you need to do your own redesign. Now, the first thing that I did was to recreate this nav bar on top. Now, I haven't seen any discrepancies or any opportunities here on the navigation bar. The only thing that I changed is that I slightly made the call to action a bit lighter so they're more visible, but besides that I just kept everything as it was. Then I used Unsplash to obviously add a profile picture and then, then I started working on the actual video frame. Now a thing that I did here is that I slightly increased the corner radius of the video just to make sure that it works well with the rounded elements that I already have in my design and also my fully rounded call to actions. And after that an opportunity that I saw is that instead of having this title over here on the left side and then having this gap on the right, what I can do is I can simply grab the that title and just overlay it on top of the video frame. So whenever you hover over with the mouse, you will have the title of the video and underneath you can see the views and how long ago this video was posted. Now it's a slight change, but I think like this will add to that overall polished look that I'm looking for when redesigning this. So again, I don't want to do too many changes, but I want to do some changes that actually make a difference both from a visual point of view and from a functionality point of view as well. So after I added the title, I just created this slight gradient that will be overlaid on top of the video and that's because I want to make sure that whatever image is behind that text, that text will still be visible. Now another thing that I did not like about the current user interface is that the control buttons for the video seem that they don't work as well with the user interface. So what I did, I simply copied the button for the speak to search and I just used that as a template to create all the controls for the video. Now again same as I did previously for my top part of the video frame, I just added this gradient on the bottom just to make sure that all the elements that I'm gonna add on here are gonna be visible regardless of the background that they're gonna have. And because I was using a component, I can simply click on this dropdown and select the icon that I need. So that speeded up my design process tenfold. Now the next step was to recreate this auto play button as well, just to make sure that it works well with the current interface. And for that, I simply created a rectangle, added a 99 corner radius, selected my button style, which I created previously after I created my first button and then just added this white circle on top and an icon inside of it so that it works well with all the other elements that I created so far. So now if you look at the user interface, it already started looking a bit better. Now it's not a huge difference again, but these subtle changes just make the whole user interface look a bit more cohesive. Now the next step was to tackle the part where you have the actual profile picture and the channel's name. And the key thing here is that I wanted to make sure that all the call to actions that I'm gonna add here will be beneficial for the content creator. So I added the profile image Image, the channel name and underneath that I added the subscriber count and I made sure that I have a divider between the channel name and subscribers 
and the subscribe button. And again, from a visual point of view, the reason why I put this together is that these two, in my mind, go well together because you're subscribing to an actual channel. So that's why I wanted to bring these elements together and just make sure that they're boxed separately so you will understand that when you click subscribe, you're actually subscribing to that channel. And I managed to do this not only by making the button larger, but also by removing that video title that was previously on top of it. So now it's a lot cleaner and in my personal opinion, it's more clear that that subscribe button is linked to that channel. Not that anyone doesn't know how the YouTube works, but from a visual point of view, it makes more sense. Now, after I did this section, I started recreating the like and dislike button, the thanks or the super thanks or the donations, however you want to call it, and the share button because those three, in my opinion, helps the content creator the most. Okay, so in case you wondered why we suddenly stopped, uh, well, it's because I had to travel and I did not manage to finish filming. I told you guys I'm going to take you everywhere I go, so I'm currently traveling, so I'm taking you guys with me. That's the beauty of being a designer. You can design anywhere as long as you have your laptop. So yeah, let's carry on with the redesign now. Now in terms of the rest of the buttons that show up on desktop, what I thought about was just to put all of those other functionalities underneath these three dots. And the main reason I did this is because I want to put the emphasis on the call to actions that actually help the content creator. So that's the main reason why I decided to hide those buttons underneath the more button and not put all of them on the desktop version as they are currently now. So it's purely just to keep the user focus on the call to actions that matter for the content creator. Then I just selected all of these elements that I previously created, added an auto layout just to make sure that they are properly spaced. Now for the next section that I designed, here is where I think that the biggest innovation actually took place in my redesign. And that's because I decided to just take out all of those links that you normally put in the description, like the affiliate links or any links that creators put in. Instead of adding them in the description, I just took those out and just created these chunks key call to actions that users can click on them and also I provided the content creators with the ability not only to show these links outside of the description but also personalize the title so that they can incentivize the viewers to click on them. Now to fix the problem with the amount of links that a creator can add I thought about adding these links into a carousel so that no matter how many links a creator will add you will always have the ability to showcase them. So, so technically you can add an infinite amount of links in this UI pattern will still work. Underneath these links, I added the description, added the divider, then I copied the search bar, copied the profile image as well, lined these elements here on the left side, changed the text from search to add comments, dragged the input field all the way to the right, and then I replaced my search icon with the text send. Now, something I don't like about the current UI on how comments are being showed is that they are not clearly divided. And because of this, what I wanted to do is to just box each comment so you can see exactly the main comment and how many replies it has. So I started by simply just adding the number of comments and then I started working on the actual comment card. And for that again, using the same principles that I did till now, I just reused the channel name and the profile image that I created previously. I just copied those, slightly modified them to fit this card design that I wanted to create. Then again, I copied the like and dislike button, created a reply button, added a lighter background, just so you can see that this is a separate element, created the pin element and functionality. And then finally, I added this button on the right side, which shows you the number of replies. And when you click on it, you'll obviously see all the replies that are related to that comment. Then I copied the new comment card, changed a couple of details just to make sure that they are different enough, changed the profile images, and with this, the new comment section was done. And for the last part of the redesign, which is this section over here on the right side, I started by creating this rectangle, added some corner radius, used Unsplash to add an image, added a title as well, then added some linear gradients both on the top and the bottom of the image, and then copied the subscribe button and changed the color from red to white, just because I wanted to introduce a secondary button so that the primary button, the red one, will only be kept for the subscribe button, which is still the most important call to action on this page, at least in my design. Change the text to view now, and then use the share button to create the filters that go underneath. I just added some random filters like all cameras from Peter McKinnon, tripod, Canon, and then at the end, just to make sure that this is fully scalable, I added a small arrow. So this will be a dynamic carousel, meaning that in theory, you can actually add as many filters as you want. Now, after creating these filters, I started recreating the recommended video thumbnails. So I just started with a rectangle, added a random title, 
added some corner radius to my rectangle, replaced the fill with an actual thumbnail that I downloaded previously, and then I repurposed the channel name and the number of subscribers to display the channel name for the recommended video, and then underneath I just changed the details to show the number of views and when this video was posted. And just to make sure that everything looks clean and that you can visually differentiate the title from the channel name and the amount of views, I just added a small one pixel divider. And after redesigning this, a thing that I wanted to do is to make that new video tag pop out a bit more. And to achieve this, I simply created this new pill shaped tag, used our primary color red just to make sure it stands out, copied the gradients from my banner using command C and then pasting them on my thumbnail underneath, slightly adjusted the gradients and then I copied the tag on the top of my thumbnail. So as you can see now that new tag actually pops and it's a lot better than the current design that they're using. Then I started making copies of these thumbnails, started replacing these images with the thumbnails that I downloaded at the start of the video, just so I make sure that those over overlays and that new tag works on whatever background they're being displayed on. And that's it. This is the final design. Now I'm not sure what you think about it, but me personally, I think it looks a lot better than the current UI. So if you put these designs side by side, you'll definitely notice those changes. And again, you know how that saying is that the devil's in the details. And that's exactly what I feel like we achieved here. Although it's not different, it looks better just because we took care of all of those small details. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video pretty soon. I'm not sure where I'm going to film next, but if you want to follow along, you know where to find me. See you there. Bye-bye.